Good Sunday morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review. I thank God for you on this day. This Sunday, the 26th of December, 2021. The last Sunday in this year, the year 2021. We thank God for you again today and we second the statement, you are welcome. Our review, the topic of discussion, the topic of our focus, as I referenced discussion with you in your homes, discussion internally with you yourself, discussion as we end this lesson today with you, family and friends, the topic is according to the promise. Again, according to the promise. Our lesson is found in the book of Luke, the first chapter, verses 46 through 55. And this is lesson number four. Again, we thank God for this day that he hath made. We as his people, we're glad for the day and we rejoice in the opportunity God has provided us. We rejoice in the opportunity and the privilege to experience this day. Hallelujah. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. I'd like to acknowledge and salute the leaders, our pastor, Pastor Anthony Rogers, and our First Lady, First Lady Charlene Rogers. We thank God again as forestated to you, Facebook, you, YouTube, you, the Unity community who have taken time out of your busy schedule to join us on today. Our Sunday School Superintendent, Deacon Joe Daniels, and his companion, Sister Annie Daniels, working closely by his side. Praise God, and I thank God. It may be a redundant statement to some, but I thank God. He gives me the privilege and the opportunity to say it weekly. I thank him. I thank the leadership at Unity for the opportunity to share God's word weekly by way of Sunday school. Our memory verse today, the focus of scripture in which we commit to memorize, memorize in our actions, memorize in our talk, memorize in our way of thinking is found in, excuse me, Luke, the first chapter, verse one, excuse me, chapter one, verse 46. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my savior. That is the King James version. The new international version is as follows. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Praise God. We thank God for the memory verse. And as we explore today's lesson, we will see how and understand that memory verse and the expressions of Mary as she proclaims, hallelujah, how her soul magnifies the Lord. More importantly, we will also align or outline how this same prayer, how this same statement, let me rephrase that, how this same statement can apply to both you and me on today in the life that we currently live in this present world. Our lesson aim reads, by the end of this lesson, we will individually and collectively review Mary's song praising God's faithfulness. We will appreciate the faithfulness of God's people from generation to generation, and we will examine areas in our lives when our faithfulness to God can be strengthened. Praise God. 
Our lesson aim gives instructions to review, to appreciate, and to examine. We know these words and the meaning thereof. Praise God, but it is important sometimes to refresh, to make sure that our understanding is current. Hallelujah. Review is a formal assessment or examination of something with the possibility and our intention of implementing and instituting change if and when necessary. That's the purpose of review, to appreciate, to understand a situation fully, to recognize the full implications thereof, hallelujah, to capture the value of something. And then to examine, to inspect, to investigate thoroughly, to test the condition of, praise God, to test by questioning, to test by questioning to understand the fitness and our knowledge. We are examining. Today we're reviewing. We are individually going to apply what we learn so that we can appreciate, hallelujah, and examine how this word today, how God's word today by way of Sunday school applies to us individually as believers. We must be open to God's word to review, to appreciate, and then examine and apply. Not wait to apply, but to apply immediately. Praise God from today forward. That is the goal of our lesson aim, our Bible truth, our Bible application and Bible learning are as follows. Our Bible truth reads God fulfilled his promise to Adam and Eve, Sarah, and Abraham, and all who followed him through Mary, who was promised a son. Our Bible application, to learn that God desires, praise God, to learn that God desires that we be faithful and thankful for all his good promises. And our Bible learning to understand that Mary praised God because he, he had promised to make her the mother of his son. Our Bible truth, our Bible application, and Bible learning are outlined and clearly designated so that we as individual believers can apply these theories and strategies to our lives, to our way of thinking, hallelujah, to the actions that we make as actions we choose to make as individuals, ultimately to ensure that our life and the actions that follow align with the will of God, align with the will and promises of God. Praise God. When our life aligns with the will and promises of God, we are positioned. We are positioning ourselves. We are placing ourselves in a position to receive when we are fully aligned with the word of God. Placing ourselves in a position to be recipients of the promises of God. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word. We thank God for the instructions and guidance that are outlined and provided in his word that if we follow, if we adhere to these examples, these instructions, hallelujah, we will benefit from the promises of God. We will benefit from the promises outlined in the book of Genesis all the way through the promises captured 
and outlined through the book of Revelation, we will be in a position to receive and be beneficiaries of the promises of God in their entirety in the book. The book we refer to as the Bible. Again, chapters, books, and everything written therein from Genesis all the way through Revelation. As we explore our subject and our topic today, according. The word according is as stated by or in attested by, depending on, in conformity with, hallelujah, as directed or required by. When you are in accord with something, it is aligning to something that has been previously specified. Hallelujah. You're conforming to, or there is conformity to what has already been designated according to, again, as stated by. We thank God for his word because we are learning to abide so that we can, hallelujah, be impacted by the according to, hallelujah. And the word promise, we have reviewed the word promise over the past few weeks as we have reviewed the history and scriptures associated with the promises that God made Abraham and his wife, Sarah. A promise is a statement telling someone that you will do something or something will happen. It will happen now or even possibly in the future. The most important thing when speaking of or referring to a promise is that it will certainly happen. It will certainly take place beyond a shadow of a doubt. This thing will be fulfilled. Again, according to the promise as we explore today's lesson, as we examine our lives and the different steps and rules and instructions that we adhere to, it's all necessary, hallelujah, as we work to increase, enhance, hallelujah, and solidify our faith. Praise God as we have reviewed in the book of Genesis some of the foundational promises that God made Abraham, these foundational promises were instrumental in helping Abraham solidify and establish what was necessary for him to, praise God, have pillars, foundational pillars establishing his faith, foundational faith, praise God, supporting the fact that you believe. There are often times when we ask ourselves, based upon the task, based upon some situations and trials that we encounter and that come upon us, why do we believe? If you have no idea why you believe, then those trial situations that come, they may, hallelujah, deter you. They may discourage you. But our lesson today and previous lessons in this series are reviewing and going over some of the foundational, praise God, some of the foundational concepts that establish our faith in God, both now 
and for the future, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Foundational is denoting an underlying basis or principle, and fundamental is forming a necessary base or core. Hallelujah. The promises of God are established and founded. Hallelujah. On his word. Praise God. And anything God promises. Hallelujah. His word notes that he will deliver. His word gives example to his promises and the foundation of said promises, how they were established. Thus our lesson giving guidance into the history and background of Abraham and the promises God made to Abraham and how they expanded to his wife and to his family, but how it was necessary for Abraham to believe, hallelujah, <coughs> to leave his past and everything he was familiar with, praise God, to receive those promises. Abraham acted upon the fundamental promise of God and based upon his action, he established the foundation, hallelujah, of faith that we, that you, that me, that Mary in today's lesson acts upon, hallelujah, again establishing the foundation, the fundamentals of faith. Praise God. Why? Do you believe? And our lesson gives clarity. Our lessons have been providing substantial background scripture to support the very fact that believe, trust, and continue to believe because God will fulfill. God will provide. God will do as promised. Hallelujah. There's a lot of scripture background that leads up to our lesson today. Our lesson begins at the 46th verse of that first chapter of the book of Luke. There's a lot of history and background that takes place in the first 45 verses. Certainly I can't go verse by verse. Therefore, as always, I instruct, Pastor Rogers instructs, that you read the scripture for yourself. You know God's word for yourself. You study God's word for yourself. In past lessons, hallelujah, the fast past two to three weeks, our lesson commentary has been repetitive and in some ways redundant on the theory that relationship, establishing a relationship with God is important. It is important to receive the blessings of God. It is important to trust, hallelujah, God. Establishing a relationship is key, hallelujah, for the present and the future in order for God to fulfill. The Gospel of Luke was written to establish the scriptures tell us an orderly and accurate account of what had been accomplished by the life and teaching of Jesus Christ. The wording as referenced in that first chapter of Luke is an acknowledgement that there were other accounts that existed of the actions and the life of Jesus. We know the book of Mark. We know the book of John. We know the book of Matthew captures some 
of the same exact events. Hallelujah. But Luke wanted to put things in chronological order. Luke investigated to give additional detail. This detail because it, hallelujah, was necessary. He was giving and capturing specifics to share an account of what had been accomplished to an individual, a Roman by the name of Theophilus. It is assumed by historians that Theophilus was of Roman background. What his specific position was, we are not certain. It does not clarify. But what we do know is this is an individual who had a desire and a longing to pursue that new way of thinking, that new way of life that was rumored and talked about by Jesus Christ. Christianity, hallelujah, Luke captured and shared his sequence of events so that Gentiles, people like you and me, could understand the promises of God and not only understand, but receive and have knowledge that these same promises apply to us. They are for everyone. God is and was not respect of persons, but his promises, the promises that he fulfilled by and through his son would be made available to all. Luke wrote to ensure the readers, hallelujah, who read his account, would realize and recognize they too could partake in the promises of God regardless of where they were from, regardless of their nationality. Hallelujah. Thus, the importance of the gospel of Luke and how he presented Jesus, the Messiah, the promise of God being prevailed, excuse me, being fulfilled. The information we reviewed in recent weeks about Abraham and his faith, those were foundational, hallelujah. Those were fundamental examples that God shared in the book of Genesis with us by way of Abraham to note that it must start, it must begin somewhere. And it begins with his promise, hallelujah. And it continues with our belief. It continues with our trust. It continues through our hope and the fulfillment is made. Hallelujah, by our continued belief. Hallelujah, evidence and background and as to why and to how we can demonstrate our faith in God as believers. Abraham being designated as the father of faith shared in past lessons, examples of his walk, sometimes doing things on his own, but how he always, hallelujah, came back, got things right, erected an altar, allowed God to move and direct him at that place of altar. Hallelujah. Oh God, we learned last week that when we erect an altar, an altar is a place where we can position ourselves for God to make changes. This is just not a history lesson of what happened then, 
but it is a lesson in history of what God did then, of how he fulfilled his promises later, and how he's continuing to fulfill his promises even today through you and me. Foundational faith, hallelujah, continues this week as we explore the book of Luke. Luke provides specifics or details to help those who do not know Jesus. It helps them accept him. It helps non-believers believe in him and it helps, hallelujah, the history and the account that Luke provides, his version, it helps those who do not know Jesus to trust in him. Luke's goal is to demonstrate God has and God will continue to do and to deliver on his promises. Ultimately, the bottom line is God will do what he promises. Luke captured to ensure that you, again, and we individually as believers are factual, have factual information to help our walk, help our belief in God. Hallelujah. Luke provides tangible references that can be validated to eliminate the fact that we are demonstrating faith in God and not old wives' fables. I've heard recently people make reference to the fact that they cannot understand why we practice religion when the Bible was created to help slave owners manage slave and slaves and or the behaviors of such. Hallelujah. The gospel, glory to God, was written before slavery and are the slavery of Africans. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the book of Luke, was written so that Gentiles have a personal knowledge and understanding of what God has done through his son to benefit all of us. The gospel is real, and the accounts written therein give us hope, hallelujah, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because he made promises to Abraham, to Sarah, to Mary, who is the focus of our discussion today, and Zechariah, those same promises he will make and deliver and fulfill to you and I even today. Hallelujah. Again, what God promises, God will do. No matter what, no matter the length of time, God will deliver his promises. The importance of these lessons is demonstrating our faith in action. We've seen the last few weeks the fact that Abraham demonstrated faith in action. He questioned, but he moved forward. He did not allow age. He did not allow the fact that he was not clear on certain things. In many instances, God told him to go and he would provide specifics later. Again, our lessons come to give us encouragement by way of specifics that regardless of what is happening and taking place around us, we must move forward forward in order for us to receive, in order for God to fulfill his promises, we must move forward. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
We're living now for God to bless us. Hallelujah. Later. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're living now. Let me rephrase that so that God can bless us now and later. Often we speak of legacies. We leave wills for our families to eliminate confusion. We must apply the same theory to faith, to trust, hope, and belief. We must demonstrate faith to our families and loved ones. Our will to obey should be the most important legacy we leave. As our will has a dual purpose, both spiritually and naturally. Number one, our will spiritually to believe, trust, and accept. Number two, our will naturally to ensure that all is in order here on earth. We are leaving something for our ancestry, for our offspring. That is our compliance to the will of God. That is our compliance to his word, to his way, because we realize that his promises, some are fulfilled now, hallelujah, and some will be fulfilled later. Just as we're learning of Abraham and the book of Genesis <laughs> and the promises God made to him then, some of those very promises are not fulfilled until we get into the New Testament today. In our today's lesson, some of those same promises God made Abraham are not fulfilled until years later. Hallelujah. Abraham's trust and faith in action demonstrated he did not know when, but his responsibility to God, his faith in God, would impact his future and that of his ancestry later. Hallelujah. Praise God. We must display and demonstrate complete willingness to obey to completely align. Hallelujah. You must demonstrate full compliance to reap all the benefits are the promises of God. As forestated, today's lesson provides the necessary support for us to move forward in our faith walk. Today's lesson provides encouragement for us to move forward. The goal today is for you to move forward, for you not to be stagnant, for you not to pause, hallelujah, but for you to do, hallelujah. What you do now, it does matter. It not only matters to you, but to your offspring for generations to come. Hallelujah. That first chapter, verses five through nine, there's an announcement that is given of in advance about John the Baptist. Zacharias is a priest and his wife Elizabeth, they were a couple and she was barren. They were righteous, the scripture notes. They were upright before God. They were obedient, blamelessly obedient, but they were older and they had no children. Verses 8 through 10 captures the fact that Zechariah was a priest who provided service at the temple. As you can imagine, like then as we have now, there were multiple people or individuals operating in the capacity of a priest. Hallelujah. Therefore, the opportunity to work and to, hallelujah, execute certain duties in the temple 
were provided or a, a given opportunity by way of casting lot. <laughs> Some may have had the benefit to serve once in their lifetime if the lot fell in their favor. Incense was offered to God daily, morning and evening, as per Exodus, the 30th chapter, verses 7 through 8. Praise God. Zechariah was chosen to be responsible for burning incense on this particular day, in this particular setting, in the first chapter of the book of Luke, going through to verses 11 through 17 in that first chapter, when it was his time to execute his duty. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord appeared. Not only did the angel of the Lord appear, but the angel of the Lord had a name. That name was Gabriel. Gabriel was standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw the angel, he was frightened. A reaction I'm sure many can relate to. We see in previous scriptures, Sarah was, hallelujah, frightened. Abraham at times was frightened. Now we have Zechariah who was frightened. I'm certain, again, it's something that we can relate to. You see someone appear. Hallelujah. Oh, God, but when the Lord takes special consideration for us, for those who are living right, as the scripture reference, those who are living blamelessly, hallelujah, God visits God uses, but God does not want to make afraid. Hallelujah. The angel noted, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. God is answering your prayer. Your wife will bear a son and you shall call him John. The angel noted, this son will be a joy to you. Hallelujah. And he gives Zechariah specifics on how his son is to be raised and what he will do and how he will be received by mankind. In verses 8, 3 to 20, Zechariah's response was not as certain Hallelujah, as the specifics shared by the angel Gabriel. Zechariah's response was one of question. His response was question filled with unbelief. Zechariah wanted to know how can I be sure of this? I'm old and my wife is well in her years. He responded. At that time, the angel identified himself and who and what he represented. I have told you and you do not believe, and I'm paraphrasing, and as a result, you will be silent until what I have shared is fulfilled. People of God make no error, regardless of what we think, regardless of what we believe, God will deliver on his promises. Hallelujah. There are certain times when our lack of belief, when our unbelief places us on the sidelines and all we can do is watch. We can't say a word because of our unbelief. Because Zachariah questioned and did not believe he was sidelined. He was able to watch, to receive, 
and to benefit from the blessings of God, but because of his lack of belief, he was silenced. Hallelujah. People of God, we too can be silenced. People of God, we too can be sidelined because of the lack of belief, because of the lack of trusting. Hallelujah. Because of the lack of faith, thus and therefore it is imperative that we believe the promises, we trust the promises of God, and we establish a foundational relationship with him. We build on that foundation. We reinforce that foundation, and that is by living, hallelujah, his way, by reading his word, by demonstrating in action and deed that we trust, that we follow him, hallelujah, so that we will not be sidelined, so that we will not be silenced, hallelujah. Verses 26 through 38, speak to the foretelling. It was told in advance, hallelujah, of the birth of Jesus. God sent that same angel Gabriel to Nazareth to a virgin who was already pledged to be married. In those 26 through 38 verses, he tells her that virgin who had already, who was already pledged to be married. We know her name being Mary. He tells her, Gabriel, you are highly favored. Not only are you highly favored, but the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Gabriel gives Mary assurance of who she is, what she meant to God before he tells her of the promise. Hallelujah. He wants her to know that she is positioned properly to receive the promise of God, but not only to receive it, but that God's promise may be fulfilled through her. It's imperative that we know God for ourselves, that we believe and trust, and that our reaction is positive so that we're not sidelined and we're not silenced. Hallelujah. Because when we believe, when we trust God reinforces who we are to him and what he is to us. Hallelujah. Mary pondered. She listened. She thought about. She pondered just briefly. Hallelujah. About the saying of what Gabriel had shared. And she did not understand. Hallelujah, the statement, the greeting. When we do not understand, God hears and addresses our concerns. Again, the angel noted, do not be afraid. Do not fear, Mary. Hallelujah. Oh, God, the fear, the awe, the wonder of God and who he is, it humbles us right in our position. The great God that he is, is coming to speak directly to me, hallelujah, by way of an angel, by way of an angel who had a designated name with a designated message specifically for Mary. This lets us know the promises of God at times are specific. Hallelujah. 
They are for we, us, individually. And as we receive them individually, hallelujah, the benefit is to those we know collectively. Hallelujah. Mary was in fear. She was in awe. She was in wonder of how. And the angel, excuse me, then the angel Gabriel in her presence now. Hallelujah. The angel provided specifics of the child's name and what he would do. How this would be accomplished by what means. And the angel even gave Mary specifics about her cousin Sarah and the fact, excuse me, and the fact that she too, not her cousin Sarah, but Elizabeth, and the fact that she too would conceive. Mary reacted. Hallelujah. I keep talking about the reaction, our reaction. We saw the reaction of Zechariah, a questionable reaction a reaction that did not display complete faith and belief. But Mary reacted logically asking how this could be accomplished, how she would bring forth a son when she did not know a man in that manner. Hallelujah. Verse 37 notes the angel's response, for with God nothing shall be impossible. That's a favorite scripture of our pastor. Again, that 37th verse notes, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Mary's reaction continues in verse 38. Mary notes that she is the handmaiden of the Lord. She acknowledges who she is. She is a servant of God. Hallelujah. And she acknowledges and agrees. Let his word as outlined by you be fulfilled. I'm paraphrasing. She was in alignment. Her will coincided with the instructions that were shared by the angel Gabriel, regardless of the fact that she was promised to someone else, she accepted and was willing to, hallelujah, do as instructed. She did not question. She too acted just as Abraham did. She reacted in a positive way. Hallelujah. Just not by word, but her deeds supported her actions. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just as he did for Zechariah and now with Mary, God lets us know in advance of events that will come and impact your life. He lets us know in advance. Hallelujah. Do you have a relationship with God where he lets you know in advance? Again, Mary was in a position where God used her. Again, Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth followed the instructions of God and lived a life that was blameless. Praise God. Zachariah's response was not favorable, but God allowed him to be sidelined, to watch his work from the sidelines. We do not want to be sidelined. But again, the most important Thing today is a relationship with God. Our relationship dictates 
and denotes our reaction. Hallelujah. No relationship, no benefit of the promise. We're talking about Abraham. We're talking about the continuity and the continuation of God's promises to Abraham and how they are now being fulfilled in the New Testament through today's lesson, verses 46 through 55. But again, it is imperative to we as believers that we receive and act on the promises of God immediately so that we do not limit, we do not diminish, hallelujah, the outcome of his promise in the future. Mary's reaction continued. Again, it just wasn't in word to the angel Gabriel, but she continued Indeed, in that 39th verse, hallelujah, she got ready and hurried her way to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Praise God, and something happened there. I asked you to read that entire first chapter for yourself. Part one today lets us know the Lord fulfills his promises. Verses 46 through 49, God fulfills his promises. Our lesson commentary notes Elizabeth was older and pregnant. <laughs> and now we have Mary who was young and pregnant. Elizabeth who was older and beyond age scientifically, beyond her childbearing years, and Mary who has never been with a man, which in theory eliminates the possibility of her logically having a child. God is fulfilling his promises by making the impossible possible. God is fulfilling by making the impossible possible. He is fulfilling his promise by way of a virgin birth, which is totally unheard of. Scientifically, it's not possible. Hallelujah. We see God doing this for Abraham and Sarah, and now we see he continues to fulfill his promises in the New Testament by making the impossible possible. When you fulfill is to bring to completion our reality, to achieve or to realize something that was promised or predicted, to carry out as required, pledge, or expected. God fulfills his promises regardless of the time. Hallelujah. Regardless of the century, regardless of the date, God fulfills his promises. Praise God. Mary went 80 miles from her home to visit Elizabeth. Mary reacted and acted on what Gabriel shared. Mary traveled over 80 miles based upon her belief, and she traveled with the expectancy of what she would see when she arrived at Elizabeth's. Hallelujah. They were both thankful. Mary and Elizabeth were thankful. When we are thankful, when we praise our God, when we sing songs of praise, we sing songs of his promises. We sing songs as a reminders. We sing songs to encourage. Hallelujah. In that 46 to 48th verse, again, the Lord fulfills his promises. We see the promise is being fulfilled by a song. It's termed Mary's song. Mary starts out with, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. Behold, look, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. 
Little old me, Mary. Little old me, I'm not nobody. Hallelujah. But God has regarded my low estate and done this thing for me. Hallelujah. Mary goes on to note, for he that is mighty has done great things to me. Holy is his name. Hallelujah. When God acts, praise God, we react. Mary reacted in word, deed, and song. God gives us songs. The scriptures note that the angels cannot sing. Mary was happy despite what others may think or say. She had a visit from the angel to help her receive and to believe the impossible. When we believe the impossible, you have no time to entertain limitations of those who do not believe. Hallelujah. Or those who did not receive. We sing songs to capture God's promises and to provide the necessary encouragement to ourselves and others to move forward. Hallelujah. We sing songs to solidify the promises of God. We sing songs to ensure we do not forget. We sing songs to allow his words or his promises to enlighten, to encourage, to fulfill. We sing songs because his spirit fills our hearts and minds with the will and the desire to do. Hallelujah. We sing songs because singing the songs of his praise eliminates doubt. Hallelujah. Regardless of our current state, God is looking at us now but sees a different future for us, a different end for each of us. Jeremiah 29 and 11 notes, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to you an expected end. Hallelujah. Do you allow the promises of God, this is a question to you, to spark a song from within? Hallelujah. When one is in love, regardless of what is going on around, the inside is happy, therefore the outside reacts accordingly. Do we react like we have a song that the angels cannot sing? A song authored by the promises of God? Do you have a song? Hallelujah. Mary's reaction was based upon her conversation with Gabriel, but it was solidified by her previous trust and belief in God. Mary chose Hallelujah. Let me rephrase that. God chose Mary because of her belief and walk. Can God choose you today in advance to do something to fulfill his promise because of your current belief and walk in him? We have no idea how God wants to use us, how God wants to use us to impact our end and the end of generations to come. Are we living such a life that God can use us right now? This is only a question you can answer. Mary trusted God before Luke chapter 1. Mary knew God before. Mary believed God before. Mary lived such a way God knew he could use her to fulfill his promises in advance. Again, can God use you to fulfill his promise based upon the way you're living today? And I'm moving quickly because I've got about three more minutes. Part two, God fulfills his promises to his people. Mary continued to sing her song of God promises. She noted that his mercy, the mercy of God is on them that fear him on them from generation to generation. A song reflecting the mercies of God 
Again, I'm those who fear. The importance of sharing and telling what God will and can do in both the past and the present. Hallelujah. People of God, we may get tired of hearing about the past, but we would have no present if we did not have a past. Mary was able to accept, to believe, and to receive the promises of God because the past was shared from generation to generation. At times we may feel that the past represents a lot of old thoughts and way of thinking, but again, we are not able to be in the present without the past. Does your past reflect a relationship of trust with God? It may not, but we can build upon our future today. Hallelujah. Oh, God, because he can impact today and tomorrow. But we must believe in his promises. The promises, the behavior in which we exhibit the fear of God in our life will impact the promises of God from generation to generation. The fear and all we show as we live, as we share with our loved ones and ancestry impacts them and those to follow again from generation to generation. Our lesson today is showing from Genesis to the New Testament Luke, the promises God made Abraham were fulfilled later. Hallelujah. Mary continues in that 51st to the 52nd verse that God is so strength in his arm by the action of protection. Hallelujah. Number one, he scattered the proud in their imagination of their own hearts. Scattered the proud. Got them caught up in their own pride. Hallelujah. He put down mighty men from their seats and in turn, he exalted those of low degree. He exalted those of low pedigree to those seats that were held by those of high esteem. God turned things upside down. Hallelujah. God can turn your reality upside down just as he did for Abraham and Sarah, just as he did for Zechariah and Elizabeth, just as he's done for Mary, excuse me, and Joseph. God can turn your reality upside down by his promises, but we must believe, we must hope, we must fear, hallelujah, she goes on to say that God has filled the hungry with good things. God fills with things that satisfy. He satisfies the heart, the soul, and the mind. When God does it, it equates to complete satisfaction. Mary was singing because she was completely satisfied, although the circumstances of her reality dictated that she should have a different mindset. Mary was in the mindset to sing, hallelujah, because God had done beyond what he said he would do. God had done the impossible. God continues to fulfill his promises even today, regardless of the dispensation. Hallelujah. God's promises to our, us and our families, part three. Our lesson commentary notes that God may not come when we like him to. Hallelujah. His promises may not be fulfilled by our time clock. His promises may not come when we desire them to come, but they are timely and they arrive at 
the approximate time. Hallelujah. They arrive when things are set in a position for us to receive God's promises. People were waiting for years for the Savior of the world, Jesus. He was prophesied and spoke of for years in advance, but people did not give up. Psalms helped people and encouraged people. It solidified their faith and belief, hallelujah, to continue in their walk. In the final verses of Mary's song, she notes God had helped his servant Israel. Hallelujah. His servant Israel, a group of people being referred to as one. Hallelujah. Through all of their missteps, through all of their actions of demonstrating selfish, non-belief behavior types, God yet remembered Israel with mercy. Hallelujah. God yet remembers us with mercy. In spite of things we do, God remembers his promises to us and those who come after us. Hallelujah. Has he spoke to their fathers, our fathers of old? Has he referenced with Abraham, God will fulfill those same promises to us. Second Peter 3 and 9 notes, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There are times when God allows things to happen later than we expect because he's allowing time to be on our side. He's allowing his mercy and grace to benefit us so that he can fulfill his promises. I often ask, how are you living? But today I'll ask, what is your response to the promises of God? Does your faith in action demonstrate a questionable response? Hallelujah. Does your response equate to one of your singing a song of God's greatness? Or will your response equate you to being sidelined and silenced. For those who watch us weekly, our lesson next Sunday is God watches over Joseph. Found in Genesis, we're going back to the Old Testament, the 39th chapter, verses 7 through 21, and that will be on January 2nd. Dear Father, we thank you for fulfilling your greatest promise, and that is sending Jesus Christ our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We thank you for joining today. Please remember to give. Your giving options are displayed on the bottom of the screen. And I apologize for being eight minutes over. Please remember to join us promptly at 11 a.m. in 22 minutes for an awesome, impactful word of God coming to you by way of the ministry at Unity Church of God in Christ. Be blessed and enjoy God today.